Welcome to Old Guy Tech. The OGT.TV recording studio. Technology for the rest of us. 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 Hey, this is Rob Charney, Old Guy Tech TV Interviews, and we're fortunate enough today to have with us Sue Taylor, who is a building designer, and Lori Parlin, who's running for supervisor in District 4. So thank you very much, guys, for coming into Little Old Tech TV <laughs> and uh, joining in on the fun here. Yeah, thank so, you for having us. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm really happy that you guys got an opportunity to come on in and talk about you know what you want to talk about mm -hmm. you know and um really laurie why you want to run mm -hmm. uh as i always say the process only works because we have people running mm -hmm. so thank you very much for running because mm -hmm. i won't do it <laughs> <laughs> i know how much work it takes yes, so yes. yeah so thank you very much for that i really do appreciate it mm -hmm. so why don't we start out a little bit we'll, we'll, we'll start with laurie here and why don't you talk a little bit about yourself and why you decided to run for supervisor all right. Um, I grew up in El Dorado County, mm -hmm. uh, graduated El Dorado High School, and uh, when I hit my 20s, I moved away, went to Sacramento County, because the pace up here was a little slow for me in my 20s. Right. Um, you know, that happens. Right. like everybody. Like everybody. Yeah. And yeah. then, and you know, I graduated college, Sac State, business mm -hmm. degree, uh, married, started a family, bought our first house in Rancho Cordova, mm -hmm. and as the kids started getting older, kind of went... I think I want to go back up to the foothills and that quieter, relaxed pace of life. Right, and so we right. settled in Shingle Springs and uh, how I got to be a candidate. You, you want to know that path sure, kind of, sure, right? Yeah. yeah. So what happened Somebody is Somebody had to say, hey, yeah. so you got to run. You got to fix That's this. That's what, plan, right? yes. Yeah? Okay. Well, it kind of, it was a, a natural path actually though. Um, for a while there, I was working part-time at Ponderosa High School in the library. Loved that. Right, and it yeah. allowed me to um, do volunteer work because I enjoyed doing volunteer work at the schools and all right. that and um, as my job was ending because of budget cuts um, <laughs> land use in El Dorado County was starting to heat up and I kind of got involved because of that I uh, started the Shingle Springs Community Alliance um, mm -hmm. I'm the founder and the president of that because of all the <sighs> land use decisions going on there the high density projects were coming at Shingle Springs we didn't have a voice in mm -hmm. government mm -hmm. And um, our representatives didn't seem to know, you know, what to, they weren't contacting us to see what we wanted. So, yeah. So, so your District 4 representative at that particular time didn't care less about you. Right? Well, you know, Shingle Springs, unfortunately, is in a weird position. We're cutting now, half. Now, this is pre-realignment? Uh, yeah, uh, no, this is after. after we, realignment. Yes, yeah, al okay. alignment was in 2011. Right. And that's exactly about when things started heating up, actually, right? Right. And so, um, Shingle Springs in particular, we really literally are cut in half. Uh, the north half yeah. is in District 4, south half is in District 2. Right. I happen to live in District 4, yeah. but um, for the Alliance, um, it's a community based organization. Um, we've come mm -hmm. together, done community-wide meetings. We've had two to three hundred people at these meetings. Wow. Um, a lot of yeah, education. A lot wow. of education yeah. so that Great. people can understand and engage in the process. Great. And um, we've been very effective as a community. I always tell people, and I do, I get goosebumps. Um, I'm very proud of our community. They've stepped it up. They've taken the time to get engaged in the process, understand it. Uh, when we put out a rally cry that we need to be at a board meeting, mm -hmm. they're there. They show um, up. And mm -hmm. it's important yeah. to do yeah. that so that oh, yeah. the board sees that people care about these things because at first nobody was showing up to meetings and mm -hmm. decisions were being made mm -hmm. without us mm -hmm. and um and that's how this path to being a candidate <laughs> happened sure. is people just kind of looked at me and said well you understand how to bring people together mm -hmm. um do the outreach um share information get people engaged um you have the qualities that would be a good supervisor and i'm going to be honest here I kind of went, yeah, whatever, right? <laughs> but after a time, and we kept having more and more meetings, we've had sure. four of them uh -huh. the last year, community-wide, um, and I went, no, you're right. Th these are the qualities that you would want in a supervisor to bring people together, to mm -hmm. make decisions. Um, we're constantly doing more outreach, um, right. and, and that's kind of where we're at no, right that's now. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. yeah you know, um, have you had an opportunity to sit on any county boards? County boards? 
Like, I'm just curious. No, uh, no, no. You, okay. I I've been just... like on, um, I, I worked really hard on the uh, Measure K for Kids. Sure. Like Buckeye was on the bond measure. Right. Knocked right. on doors, promoted it. Um, I remember this one guy knocked on his door and he was absolutely against it. And by the time I was done talking to him, he was like, I think I'm going to vote for that. <laughs> good and to then, you. Um, because I worked so hard, I, I got to sit on that oversight committee. Oh, good. Okay. So, yeah. But, yeah. but she's probably sat on in attendance in, on yeah. more oh, committee sure. meetings in, sure. in the county over well, the last two years. Yeah, and, uh, I, I give an example of myself, for instance. Right. I sat on the Fish and Game Commission. I mm. sat mm -hmm. and, and on the Transportation Commission all the way up to Chairman, uh, Transit Authority all the way up to Chairman. I was on the uh, Grand Jury. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, right. so that's how I got involved with mm -hmm. county government. So yeah. I understood how it works, and I know what it's like to sit on that other side mm -hmm. and listen to people talk. Right, right. And, and, and what happens is is that sometimes you get, not, I'm not picking on anybody, but sometimes you get to do some real nut jobs up there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that ruins the message for everybody else sure. is the problem. Mm -hmm. but, sure. so, but anyway, so now you're, what are you advocating as far as growth for El Dorado County? Um, you know, it's been funny. I've been labeled quite a few things. <laughs> Haven't we uh, all? all get, yeah, people like to label you. And yes. I was at one interview recently uh, where they were trying to label me, and for some reason it popped out. I said, you know, I'm not a no-growther. Mm -hmm. and But I, the word reasonable growth or responsible mm -hmm. growth, is that's a vague word. So mm -hmm. I don't like using that either because it's so subjective. What right. popped out of my mouth was, I'm a current zoning proponent, meaning if a piece of land is zoned a certain way, mm -hmm. the people that live around that area, they chose where they lo live right. because of that zoning. You know, they, they were like, oh, I, I can live with sure. this. Sure. Um, and so I'm really a proponent for current zoning. If something's, mm -hmm. you know, zoned commercial, you know, develop it commercial. If it's if it's zoned for five acre parcels, mm -hmm. you know, go for it. Do the five acre parcels, because what happens when somebody comes in and wants to develop, you know, property at a higher density right. than what it's currently zoned? Right. That is going to negatively impact the neighbors and why they chose to live there. So. I don't know if there's a term for that. That's why I just called myself, I'm a current zoning proponent. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what else mm -hmm. to call it. But I yeah. think that makes I sense to people. Sure, I understand. Yeah, because what you're saying is, hey, I bought my property. I bought my home. Right. It was zoned, whatever it was zoned. And the neighbor. And, you know, and then all of a sudden now, uh, there's a developer or whatever it may be, right, mm -hmm. wants to change the density level. Right. Mm -hmm. Now. Part of the democratic process is the ability to maybe bring this forward. Mm -hmm. And I think so your job really is educating the voters in your district. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. With your message. Yes. Yeah, and, and that's great because that's important. I, you know, I chose to live where I'm at. I'm in a minimum of two-acre parcel, mm -hmm. you know, here in, in the Diamond Springs Estates. I'm lucky enough to have almost 10 acres, mm -hmm. and I certainly would be very upset if that changed all of a sudden. Absolutely. You know? So that's, I understand where you're coming from. But I do understand also how the political side works with mm -hmm. this. So, so we have both. So it's mm -hmm. good to be an advocate. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what you guys are doing. You're being an advocate for this. So let's talk about the other the other big part that goes with this. What about jobs? What about jobs? So how do we, <laughs> how do we, and, and, and so here's part of the problem. Mm -hmm. um, we want to keep our tax dollars in Colorado County, right? Yes. I bet you guys have to believe in trying to shop local. Sure. I okay. do. I actually do. I'm yeah. trying very hard, actually, to go out of my way to shop local. We do, too. And, and so on top of that, though... We've got to get our kids, 20s, 30s or something, how do they stay in El Dorado County and actually have a career? Well, I think you also have to have the right local. I mean, um, mm -hmm. we have stuff that's local, but the stuff's all being produced somewhere else and all the money's being produced somewhere else and, or shipped out. And even when we talk about sales tax, I, I always use Walmart as an example because the, the roads were provided there, and their sales tax uh, mainly goes back to pay back the roads for the next mm -hmm. 40 years. Mm -hmm. So it's not really going into our general plan. So they put everybody out of business that was surrounding in the communities, and we're not really getting the sales tax dollars because we only get 1% of the 7%, and 85% goes back to the roads for the next 40 years. Sure, so, I understand that. So you yeah. have to know what's behind everything um, so it makes sense. and. And when the government partners with um, uh, corporations or companies or anybody, it almost makes an unfair advantage for the people that are doing it without the subsidies. So whoever told you life is fair? 
<laughs> because well, really uh, that's what it comes down to. You know, uh, I understand. And see, and, and I don't consider Walmart as a career-based job. Okay. It's, right. In other words, it's not, you know, it's my not son or my daughter job. are not going to go there. And they're not going to make Walmart their career. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm an advocate of bringing uh, high tech or, you know, which, which brings lower footprint and less carbon into the county of, of high tech jobs that can we attract more medical? Well, so I love to address that too, because sure. I actually, as a building um, designer, right. put in a eight square thousand square foot building for a guy that does electronic wiring that gets shipped all over the country in go. this county yeah. and and these, these things are happening yeah. um our county which is probably better that they don't know a lot of these things are happening because <laughs> they're they're naturally <laughs> happening without um because people like the quality of life here they're sure. coming here more because sure. of the quality of life so how do you protect that quality well, at the same time you're trying to promote those type of industries it is it is a conundrum isn't yes. it mm-hmm. yeah it is and the person that's doing this wiring he probably only would hire one or two people he's not really Maybe a job creator it was about 20 or 25 you look at the ro- okay. and what's interesting like the robotics place uh, right the right. county wanted to kick him out and put in the animal shelter and that's the only reason everybody found out they were there because right. um some somebody obviously got a hold of them and let them know that they were going to get kicked out of their building and it became a public event sure and wow we all embrace that now because they're paying those guys a lot of money a lot Mm -hmm. of them are grown up here Mm -hmm. um and there's um uh there's an engineering firm across from them that are quite successful there's a lot of little cottage places that are happening that i and they do better when they've happened almost naturally Without the, county. without the county, <laughs> um, um, too much. Yeah, our, involvement. our county doesn't have a real good history of attracting business in El Cano, and I'm talking about the quality stuff. I go back far enough, and maybe prior to you guys, but uh, I go back far enough to when the Intel, prior to the Intel sitting in Folsom, right? Okay. Uh, they were looking at this area mm-hmm. because of the l- basically the lack of earthquakes and or earthquake damage. They needed right. to set up a place where it, you know they're not in the Bay Area anymore mm-hmm. and would be shook to the ground. Mm-hmm. So they were looking at our locations. They were looking in El uh, Dorado Hills and Folsom. So do you know what made the difference? Why they selected Folsom? Gov- the government in Folsom <laughs> stepped up and said, "Well, pay your." hookup fees, we'll, you know, we'll re- reduce your TIM fees, we'll take your taxes for 10 years and reduce those. And they opened up everything for that organization mm-hmm. to build in Folsom. You know what El Dorado County did? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> okay. There was no traction. There was no discussion. There was, I mean, it was basically, you, you do what we want you to do or, or you're gone. And so there has to be there has to be a way that you can work on both sides. But see how you, then you're picking winners and losers because you're subsidizing some and not but others. That, so well, guess, yeah, but if you if you I, get a, something I, as large yeah. as an Intel, look at all the jobs it's created. Look at all that that would if it was in El Dorado Hills Business Park. Let's say it was in there. Look at all the cottage shops. You brought that up. Look at all the mm-hmm. food places the restaurants the you know all the other stuff that would go along with it they built a high school but you're asking the government to make that decision <laughs> uh, no i'm asking my representative to make that decision along okay. with the rest of those representatives to make right. that decision and uh, you know my personal feeling is that we should have gone out of our way for them uh, because there is a quality job situation and i think that's to me mm-hmm. jobs are the most critical element in Colorado county and, and, and I'm not taking anything against your zoning idea because mm-hmm, I think mm-hmm. your zoning idea is right as well. As well. They have, you because have to do both. you got to do both because mm-hmm. industry and housing, they're not a good mix together. And they need to be put in separate areas. Mm-hmm. Also, yes. when you when you buy your house, now I, I, I understand the mentality. You know, I'll, I'll make it a, um, a demonstrating situation. I was born and raised in Santa Monica. Okay, Santa Monica had McDonnell Douglas... Uh, manufacturing there in Santa Monica since prior to World War II. So what was with that was an airport because what were they building? Mm -hmm. They were building airplanes. Right. Right. So uh, what happened started happening is all of a sudden this housing started springing up all around McDonnell Douglas. Mm -hmm. And what's the first thing people do when they get in there? They want to get rid of the airport. 
They don't want to get rid of the airport. Yeah. They don't like the noise. They don't like mm-hmm. everything. And no mind, you know, you go, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. When you moved in here, <laughs> you know what was there, right, right? Right. To this day, now McDonald Douglas has gone away. They built a beautiful uh, business park in that area, mm-hmm. and uh, it's great. But there's still those houses. To this day, there are still people fighting that airport. Even though they moved in 50, 60 years after it's already been there. Right. So we have to look at our zoning like you're doing. And we have to look at the zoning. Is this the correct zoning in the right thing? So I, mm-hmm. I totally understand where you're coming from. I really do. But I think we need to look at the, the whole scope, not Absolutely. just the one. So, and I don't want this to be about me. I was just giving an opinion. I wanted it to be you about you guys. And so I'll keep my mouth shut here. Let's talk a little bit more about about how you feel about the zoning and how your neighbors feel about this. Well, basically, you know, I've been campaigning Mm -hmm. and when I go out and talk to people, that's exactly what they say is they say, I choose to live here because of the quality of life here. And um, I don't want high density next to me because that's Mm -hmm. not what Mm -hmm. it's zoned for. Mm -hmm. So that's really why um, I feel strongly about standing up about this. And don't we already have enough high density zoning waiting just to to build on? I mean, we already- Our housing element's good for eight years. Yeah. Yeah. So that, um, you know, kind of education, she was talking about all the community meetings that we did. That's kind of how we got to this point of Mm -hmm. doing petitions is because um, we asked the community we showed them the the our board of supervisors were not listening to we packed the room over yeah. and over and we were asking for things that are basically already in the general plan to right. implement right. and we're not asking for any grand you know thing that we haven't already voted on over and over so um i mean page two in the general plan is how the rural um uh, county is the most important asset is the the rural environment mm-hmm. so um we were asking to implement some of these things and they weren't listening. The public was very angry and they all were screaming recall. And so <laughs> we actually brought them to a big community meeting and we gave them four options. You know, mm-hmm. this is what it takes to do a recall. This mm-hmm. is what it takes to do an initiative. This is what it takes to do um, a, a lawsuit. Or I yeah. think, what was it? There was one There's a referendum in referendum. there. Referendum. Right. We did all, so, okay. we had a huge presentation. Very educational. And we, we gave them a survey and we sure. actually asked them, said, okay, now that you know what it takes to do one of these, mm-hmm. we, add, we asked them to rank them, which one do you want to do? And the initiative process is the one that got the most they interest. And we said, all right, then there, <laughs> that's what we're doing because mm-hmm. the community wanted it. And, um, and here we are. <laughs> yeah, and, and initiatives are good because it affects the people that are in the area. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it gives them a voice. Right, yes. So, at the very least, believe it or not, I'm sure your supervisor is quite interested in the outcome of this. Oh, they're watching. Yes. Yeah. 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 But, but in the meantime, because we put these out, um, there's a builders group from Sacramento that put one out that's almost opposite of what we're trying to do that um, uses tax funds primarily to build out the highways and uh-huh. the community areas that they're targeting. Are you talking um, on SACOG here? I'm talking region builders. Region they're, builders. They're the same okay. organization that went up against the Stop Arena folks. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. They, they did that petition and so they're the big um, push against having a vote for tax funds, <laughs> basically. So, so they have infiltrated into our county yeah. and they're um, representing their petition really similar to what ours is. So let me, so. Show, let me show what you're talking about to sure. the audience there. We've got, we've got some papers here that you're yeah. trying to show. And uh, of course, there's a website on there as well. Why don't you tell yes. us what that website's for? Uh, this website, it's um, lvc-edc.org and that stands for Local Voter Control in El Dorado County. Um, What happened was, is we ended up with three different initiatives. They do three different things that work together really well to make it so that, um, well, two different things, really, that if somebody does want to develop something um, and change things and have a huge impact on the county, they have to pay for their own impacts. We don't want to pay for their roads and impacts. They need to do it themselves. Okay. Um, And then the other thing is, this one, especially here, the purple one, um, has some policies in it that are currently in our current general plan Mm -hmm. that would be advantageous to implement Mm -hmm. they haven't been implemented even though they're in the plan and what we're saying is um i'll just mention a few key ones there's some historical 
um, policies, you know, to identify, survey our historical sites. There's a water resource management plan we're supposed to be doing in our general plan. That kind of stuff is in here. And we're saying, you know what, county, implement these policies first before you move forward and do any more discretionary projects. And mm -hmm. discretionary projects are when you actually have to do a general plan amendment, you know, to change the zoning or the land use. Um, because our current numbers and everything are based on our current zoning and right. current land use. Right. Right. So that's kind of how we so, got to and this. this now, will you have another, let's go back again. Oh, sure. Uh, so let's go ahead. Well, the yellow one so, is yeah. basically in 98, uh, the public voted that the um, developments that came in would have to pay for the impact of their own projects and that they couldn't create gridlock on our roads and highways no more f and level huh right yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. you've heard of that and so in 2008 um some of the developers and board members and the guys that kind of were behind a little bit of this got together and rewrote it because it was supposed to come back to ballot after 10 years so they rewrote some of it we call it tweaked mm -hmm. and then <laughs> it gave the board of supervisors the four-fifths vote to override and allow for gridlock on certain pro you know if they right. picked a project they thought was golden they could go ahead and allow gridlock right so it's it's created a lot of cronyism going on within the county and why a lot of these projects are coming forward is because they have the right to um, override that issue. Right. So what this right. one does is put it back in the um, 1998 verbiage, pretty much, and then we cleaned up a few things. Um, you know, as a building designer, if somebody tries to put in a kitchen, they usually get hit with a whole timphy. You just want a kitchen in your basement, your kids are coming by, um, you get a whole timphy fee. So we actually put in there that you don't get hit with a timphy for putting an extra kitchen in your house. And it's ironic, I just got a phone call two days ago from a contractor saying, hey, these guys want to put a kitchen in their basement. And I'm like, whoa, um, that's going to be a huge Tim fee. And, and come sign my petition if you want to put <laughs> yeah. that. So the, when you said it's going to be a huge Tim fee, is that not attached to the square footage of change? Well, see, people get confused when you say the building fees are so much. Most of it has to do with the road fees. Correct. To pay and and when the the whole idea, we have about eight hundred and fifty million dollars worth of projects on the books, mm -hmm. and so that's got to get divided. Somebody's got to build that. Somebody's got to pay for that. And that's kind of what Major Y did was say, um, these are all the roads that we need. Now we have to divide it among everybody of how it's going to get paid for. And that's what um, created such a huge fee right. for the roads. Right. And that's mm -hmm. the biggest fee that you have when you do a project. The right. rest of them really aren't that much. No, correct. So, so the well, uh, fire is up there a little bit, and you know, and, and yeah, of course, it depends you on have, what area you're yeah. in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but back to my question: uh, exactly how once you're in and you're built and you're finished and you're years down the road, now you want to come in and add that kitchen. Uh, how is the Tim fee applied? I mean, how they, do they calculate the value? They look at it as a whole new house for a kitchen. The because, total, so the, the total square footage. The last they, time I did something, I you know, today I haven't checked it because I've right. been so, you know, involved in all this for the last four years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, you know, I used to pretty much keep track of those fees, and then we'd try to work with people on different ways. If There's something like if you could guarantee that your kids were going to rent it at a low income it could qualify for low income and then you can get a discount right just, understood you know yeah. there's all these things you try to do but um for most people it just made no it, the target of major y was not to hit the kind of um you know adding a kitchen for your parents to come once a week or something yeah yeah that was the not the intent of that so i mean you don't want your tim fee more than your remodel Right, right. So, so <laughs> right, the, right. the other thing right? is that be, because they have the four-fifths vote, they have changed a lot of the, um, there's a lot of uh, ifs on the bottom, you know, of here's the requirement, but if you are this, this, or this, then you get different subsidies, or there's a lot of cronyism now in yeah. the process. So if you are going to build a, a project f of condos for people 55 and older, you can get um, discounted TIM fees because... Supposedly, people 55 and older don't drive as much. Really? So Which we have our, not found so, to be true. <laughs> so now I our, certainly don't. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we have so, very active So now our children... <laughs> I've gone down in a motorcycle, but that's another <laughs> thing, you know. So. so now our children that want to build a home are actually yeah. paying more yeah. for their TIM fees to subsidize people. Um, and there's a lot of marketing to bring people basically from the Bay Area right. to our area. Right. Um, right. 
they they have the uh, Prop 90, which subsidize. Well, I call it. Um, it, it lets people moving here retain their um, lower tax dollars mm -hmm. for. So then you have people moving here, retired, sell their really expensive home in the Bay Area, and get to come here with a lower um, property tax. Right. And so mm -hmm. our kids are now supporting them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's yeah. we're trying to do stuff that levels the playing field. Um, looks more to our local needs and um you know kind of holds the board of supervisors to the fire of the things that we've been promised for the last 20 years so, so let's talk about this one again a little bit this is your, mm -hmm. your yellow one that's, yellow that's right there and it w what is the name of the initiative so that people can know what to look for i think the name actually is right where is it I don't have my yeah, you have to on. do this is really it's a <laughs> initiative, An initiative to, measure to, to reinstate yeah, okay. measure wise original intent no more paper roads okay and we, uh, and we uh, should probably explain the yeah, paper her, roads are yeah. too I'll let Lori yeah. explain um, as Sue was saying we have this huge um, list of road project improvement projects it's called the capital improvement program mm -hmm. CIP and it's huge, and I think it is up around $800 million. Yeah. And what's been said at meetings over and over and over is a lot of those projects will never happen, but they're on this list. Yeah. And therefore, what can happen is the paper roads where if a project is proposed and it needs one of these road improvements to mitigate its impact on right. our roads, right. if that road that they need is on the list, then that project can actually be approved just by being on the list. So mm -hmm. that project um, road improvement truly only exists on paper mm -hmm. and it may never get funded. Mm -hmm. So a project could get approved based on the fact that the improvement needed is on a list and who knows if the funding will ever come. Let me ask you a question. Have you had a chance to check on the shovel ready projects that are already there for uh, housing density in Serrano and some of those other areas where the infrastructure is already in? What about them? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, are, so you have they're, those. They're so you, there. Yeah. They're there. Yeah. Right? Um, and they're good to go. And, and they're good to go. None yeah. of these change anything that's by right to go ahead and build. Absolutely. Yeah. This has to do with future land use gotcha. change. If they want right. to change something. All right. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to understand that. Yeah. You know, oh, mm -hmm. something shovel didn't. ready. It's good to go. I mean, okay. yeah. All right. Um, this is more if somebody wants to make changes to the zoning or mm -hmm. you know, their, yeah, that kind of thing. Well, we feel actually if they implement this, then these large corporations that want all these big roads to be developed um, may not have that much need for those large roads, and we, you could actually reduce the TIM fees on single family homes because we're not helping to pay for all of that. Mm -hmm. Does that kind of make sense? Well, I understand that, yeah. but housing is really never, ever paid for itself. Exactly. No. You know, and so that's why housing projects are, you know, it's, it doesn't right. do right. us any good, yeah. really. I mean, and I'm not being one of these people say, hey, I'm here now, now you can't come. No. <laughs> yeah. Which some places do, right? Yeah. But uh, we're not that way, but I understand that. So, right, right. So right. Um, now you had a map, too. And now what was, was, yes. What's this map so showing? Th Let's this take a look here. This goes kind of with the green one, and I'll, Lori's really good at this. Uh, oh. <laughs> well, um, how we got to this point here is... In the last year or so, specifically in Shingle Springs, what happened with the San Stino project mm -hmm. is at one meeting somewhere, somebody actually um, kind of hollered at the developer <laughs> and said, why are you even considering doing this here in Shingle Springs, this high density project? It doesn't make any sense. The response was, because you have a community region line around you in Shingle Springs. Mm. And everybody went, at that time, this is before we start our community meetings, kind of right. like, what, what is a community region line? Nobody knew what they were. Right. right. Um, and so we did a bunch of research. Sue helped mm -hmm. us. This is when we were just getting organized. Mm -hmm. And we, we, as a community, came together and went, oh, wow, we don't want that community region line on us because we have realized um, it's there as part of the general plan. Mm -hmm. And most people didn't know it was there when they voted for or against the general plan. And um, the well, they, they didn't understand it. They didn't understand right. it. Yeah. So it's basically an urban boundary line. It's an line. urban limit line. Mm -hmm. And the developer pointed out that, well, you're in one of those urban limit lines, community region line, and therefore that's why I'm proposing this. So mm -hmm. we said we probably want to get rid of that urban limit line, specifically on Shingle Springs. Come to find out, Sue had been working for almost four or five years to get rid of the 
same urban limit line um, on Camino Pollock Pines. Mm -hmm. And then we found out down um, along the Green Valley Corridor, there's a, the Green Valley Alliance Group down there. Um, they just wanted to reduce their urban limit line, the community region line, mm -hmm. off of Green Valley, kind of the northern part of Eldorado Hills that is more rural. Um, because it doesn't make sense to them to have high density out there away from their urban center. Um, I agree. Exactly. Yeah. So we mm -hmm. started asking the Board of Supervisors as a community, we packed the room, you know, and said, look, we want to we want to look at, you know, getting rid of this urban limit line. <sighs> How did it go? There was a white paper written about him. Mm -hmm. Roger Trout, um, Director of Development mm -hmm. Services, wrote a white paper and laid out some options. And um, we looked at the options and there was one that we found kind of palatable and um, it gets rid of the urban limit line, replaces it more with a, what they call a rural center, which mm -hmm. is more of your commercial core. And that commercial core serves the rest of the land in your community. So we said, we like that choice. We want to do that. And, um, <laughs> but as luck would have it, as you start talking to the board and you go to meetings, we say, oh, we like that choice. We want to do that. We even drew a map for you to show you what we, we want to do. Right. Our we lawyer did, even wrote up the papers. Yes, our mean, lawyer <laughs> actually wrote up the ordinance <laughs> for him, blah, 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 simple. everything, laid out the case law, how you could do a neg deck, you know, negative declaration right. and all that. Right. And um, the board just kind of said, oh, that's great, guys. And yeah, that sounds good. Come and <laughs> they kept, kept having us come back for more meetings and people were getting frustrated with the process of come back, come back. And then the final straw was on December 17th, 2013. Mm -hmm. It was the last board meeting of 2013. It was the yeah. last item on the agenda <laughs> okay. of 2013. Yeah. And the board had indicated that they were going to go ahead and finally get rid of the urban limit line on Camino Pollock Pines. <laughs> we, we had been promised, I had worked with them since 2007. In 2009, they actually wrote a resolution to go ahead and do it. Okay. And then it got thrown in the black hole. And I just kept reminding them and reminding them and reminding them. Because it made no sense. If, if you put urban density right up against these farms, they'll go, f um, they'll really affect the farms in that area. Yeah. So everybody agreed. There was nobody that was contentious against it or anything. Mm -hmm. It just, mm -hmm. it was common sense for everybody. And they said, and I kept saying, do it now. They're doing that massive general plan <laughs> overhaul. And they were trying to throw it in that. And we don't want to be in that. You that's, that's, we don't want it lost in there. And, and, <laughs> and they were actually not, what we were asking is for three small rural centers. And all they were going to do is flip this into one giant rural center, which a rural center is supposed to be a small community hub. And it just makes no sense. So we, we'd actually even drawn up the lines um, for them. Everything had been done in 2009. They'd agreed. And so that, at that day, last meeting of the year, oh night, my gosh, they, uh, <laughs> they said no, <laughs> they flat out said no. So we were pretty frustrated, angry, discouraged, and, um, had it, hmm. you know, when, when you can't, when your government will not listen, you have the right to petition. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness. And that's kind of so was the really impetus of we, we, yeah. you know, especially in Shingle Springs, we saw the writing on the wall. They weren't going to, if they couldn't even do the simple, you know, everybody agrees. Camino Pollock Pines line drawing. They sure weren't going to do it for us in Shingle Springs. So. so what do you believe was the argument for not doing it? Well, they, they it's too expensive. It's going to cause, um, <coughs> we're going to have to do an environmental review. Right. It's, uh, we're going to get sued. Um. <laughs> okay, so they had all kinds of. Excuses. Excuses. <laughs> All right, I understand that. Yeah. Why they didn't like that. So, well, so you have your initiatives, and right. uh, so those are going to be coming up in uh, our, our ballots soon. Mm -hmm. I know some well, of the absentees hoping. are out there already. Yes. So we want to, of course, well, all we're these qualifying for the November ballot. Just November to be ballots. Be clear. Yes, right, we're still right. gathering our signatures. Good. And, and we have until basically May fifth to get all these turned in. Mm -hmm. And so, um, because it's a huge war out there. Um, there is another petition, like I said, from the other, the bigger builders. Mm -hmm. They came in throughout this one. You can tell it's done um, pretty well. It's a nice, expensive one Wait, done by me. nice yeah. lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're calling themselves. We actually had an argument with one of the guys who said he's local because he's from Auburn. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. The, um, so, th so like I said, this takes major, then they're calling it um, reins, uh, uh, actually, retaining they, they call it mm, extending measure y yeah but they've rewritten it and then they're extending it so mm. it's a little misleading and a lot of people have thought that they've signed this one mm -hmm. 
it's almost like this has been thrown in to purposely confuse the people that were looking for these. Right. So mm. they there is um, it's a war out there. <laughs> it's yeah. not very pretty, and they're very they're they're paid almost up to six seven bucks now. Right for a signature. For a signature. signature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Going mm -hmm. rates around fifty cents or a dollar, and and they will actually do what's called a bait and switch where they um, they'll say um, you know sign this petition to save the children, and uh, from molesters or something, and then they'll and then they'll lift it up and have you sign. We've the actually other, seen people do that. that. Right? Yeah, yes. we've been watching them do this. Oh so my. we so we really wanted to warn people. Mm -hmm. um, you can actually undo your signature if mm -hmm. you feel like you mistakenly did it for this one, and um, and and then you turn it into the elections office and they. Um, but you have to do it before they turn in their petitions. Right. right. And, 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 and I think, okay, that was going to be a question. Did you, yes. did you go ahead and turn it in to elections? Because that's right. obviously not proper. Right. Yeah. So if people go on our website, they can find that withdrawal yep. form. Okay. Um, it says right on the website because I updated it yesterday. Okay. Um, they can find the withdrawal form really easily by going to our website. They just mm -hmm. print it, sign it, mail it, fax it, or email it into the elections office so that okay. if they inadvertently... Um, signed that region builder one thinking it was ours right they can withdraw their signature and we've gotten a lot of response from that actually already because people were confused and they're a little angry that they were misled well I can understand that we yeah. have a, a thing called slates that come out sometimes oh, yes. too and oh, talk about yeah. being confused because right. oh, yeah. it could say it's a democratic right. slate and everybody on it could be a Republican yes, you yes. know and people yes. tend to want you know there's people that are just vo uh, party voters and they right. go oh, okay well <laughs> And, and I don't understand how that's legal, but I, it is. I, had, and, I, I didn't realize until I got involved in that, too, that when they called and said, you can pay to be on this slate. And I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought you were supposed yep. to be referred because no. you no. had <laughs> some common... You just pay for it. Welcome to politics. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's right. That's what it's all about. Well, we're about running out of time here. We've run over a little bit. Um, Laurie, do you have a... Something to, well, maybe we'll start with Sue. Do you have a, uh, an ending here that you'd like to well, talk about? Well, I, I feel like we're at a pivotal point with the county. You know, the things that we've been promised throughout the years, our rural nature, all these things are at, it's a pivotal point. Either we're going to be completely urbanized along the corridors is what they're pushing for. Everybody is. Mm -hmm. Our county, our board of supervisors, these builders. Um, or we retain some of um, who we are mm -hmm. as a, a rural county. So... That's all we're asking, that people have a, an honest decision to make that choice and that they know what it is that they're um, getting to choose. Good, good. And Lori, um, wrap it up. Wrap it up, wrap Lori. It up. <laughs> well, basically, if people are looking for our petitions to sign them, mm -hmm. we have the locations of where they can find us on our website. Good. So please good. check out the website. And also, as a candidate, I have my website, which I will check when I get yes, home. So I, I guess it's up. down yeah. for the moment. It was up yesterday, so I will check on that. And um, and again, um, I think that that the reason I'm running is is pure, and and I love El Dorado County. I, I respect that people live here because of the quality of life, and I've shown that I'm willing to fight for that, and, and I would continue to do that as a supervisor. Excellent. And your website is, get the, get the website address for your... For Lori's. Oh, for Lori's, mine? For yours. I think it's, what did we end up with? I think it says Lori Parlin 4, which is a number, number four, four, supervisor. supervisor.com. Yep. I'm pretty sure that's it, yeah. That's it. So <laughs> if you'd like to help uh, Lori out, there's, I'm sure, a way to donate and give her some funds and help her out. We do the same thing here. We're 100% donation driven, so we are always asking for <laughs> some money if you could. We couldn't bring these shows to you if it wasn't for your help out there. So uh, please donate to, to both causes. And I want to thank you, Sue and Lori, both for coming in and, and getting your message out to the public. Hopefully, it'll go a long way. What you'll be doing is you'll be getting a, a link. It'll be on YouTube as well as our site. Oh. Heather will send it out, and you can put it on your website. Oh, great. Well, thanks well, thank for letting you. us share yeah. because it's really hard to get, when you don't have a lot of money like yes. everybody else, yes. to get this message It's out. tough, so thank you. and that's why we decided yes. to do this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I try to say as non-political as I can because mm -hmm. and, and, I want everybody to get their message out. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important. You guys did a wonderful job. Oh, thank uh, you. Very <laughs> good, very good job. You knew exactly what to say, and, and and so thank you for coming in. And hey, out there, thank you for watching Old Guy Tech TV interviews. And today we had Sue Taylor and Lori Parlin in with us. And uh, again, 
Maybe we'll see you next time. Thanks.